It's been a long, confusing journey, hasn't it, Platinum Games, which funnily enough also describes most of your fucking releases. There have been some strange turns, Bayonetta 2 exclusive to Wii U springs to mind. That was like a fucking modern art installation being exclusive to the Etcher sketch. But Platinum Games has finally joined us in the sun. First Bayonetta 1 gets a Steam release and everyone went, oh, okay, bit weird. We didn't particularly mind that being a console game because it made it slightly easier to furtively hide when our mum burst into the room. Why don't you bring out a Steam version of that shooter you made? The one that became a bit of a cult hit and that's now sort of hard to find. What, you mean Anarchy Reigns? <laughs> <laughs> no. Obviously we're talking about Vanquish, which is highly suitable for release on PCs partly because it's a high-octane cover shooter, and partly because the main character spends the entire game wearing one. Obviously no one told the Vanquish dude not to wear a pure white suit of armour to a grimy battlefield, by rights he should have ended up looking like the floor of a sharehouse bathroom. The plot of Vanquish concerns Russia being evil. It was a little bit quaint at the time the game first came out, but has since somehow come back around to being relevant again. They take over an orbital death ray station with an army of death robots, and blow up San Francisco in a humanitarian effort to combat rising housing costs in California. But America take it the wrong way as always and refuse to surrender, dispatching a bunch of marines to the death ray station to take it back. The main character is not a marine, but an employee of DARPA wearing a very expensive DARPA developed suit of armour, because it's not like DARPA develops tech to be used by the military. No, that's why every tank and fighter plane has to be piloted by the nerd who developed it. Shush now everybody, the thing is, we're not actually supposed to be taking this plot seriously. So it is a shame that the Russia aspect has gotten itself all inconveniently relevant. There's always an undercurrent of irony in Platinum Games' stuff, although it's admittedly slightly subtler here than it is in, say, Bayonetta, the woman who routinely has to clean small children out of her armpits after they mistake her for a roller coaster. The main character smokes constantly to maintain the stereotypical grizzled badass image, but I think he only does so so he can dramatically flick cigarettes away when he's about to do things, because I don't think he ever got through more than a quarter inch of one. He's partnered for most of the game with Robert Burns, famous Scottish poet and author of Auld Lang Syne, here reimagined as a nine foot shaved bear of a man who's so grizzled he can peel potatoes by rubbing them on his chin. And as for badass, his ass is so bad it denies the holocaust and fraudulently uses disabled parking spaces. So the two of them spend the entire game having an incredibly insecure grizzle off, the flashed young newcomer in his Go Faster Stripes versus the cynical old timer wearing an entire double-decker bus, down on their knees competing to see who can suck the most gravel into their throats. There's also an attractive female support character, and whenever she's on screen the camera always seems to be one flicked cigarette away from pointing right up her skirt. It's all immensely silly stuff and par for the Platinum Games course. What makes Vanquish interesting is the combat mechanics. So obviously Vanquish set out to make a cover shooter, but after looking at what those were it asked, do we really have to plop ourselves down behind little walls so much? We exclusively make fast-paced games, because we have the attention span of a moth at a fireworks display. Then, after they were firmly told that yes, plopping down behind cover is a pretty essential part of a cover shooter, Vanquish went, could we maybe have the character breakdance behind cover rather than plop? Oh, and weird idea, rocket skates! Yes, apparently DARPA's jetpack research went nowhere, so they repurposed the tech to let you scoot along the ground like a fast-forward video of a dog with an itchy bum. And most of the combat takes place in big, wide-open arenas, so the emphasis is less on plopping down and more on dodging, changing position and managing your suit energy. Here's a little tip I discovered. If you switch weapons midway through a reload animation, the first weapon will be reloaded when you switch back to it in accordance with the principles of homeopathy, I think. Whatever, it keeps the pace up, but speaking of pace, one thing I could do without is the way you automatically go into slow motion when you're near death. Yeah, I know, it's to get yourself out of danger, but once you are, there's no way to turn it off again, so all you can do is let your suit energy run out and then pop a plop while you wait for it to come back. It's a bit of a pace killer, I thought we were avoiding plop. The last thing you want is for your game to become ploppy. I very much enjoy saying the word plop. Plop aside though, Vanquish's combat is generally a speedy and interesting take on the genre, what else has it got? What else? Damn it, we weren't prepared for this part of the interview! Quick, spawn 500 million identical robots! Yes, sadly like a severely poorly maintained harp, the game's kinda one note. The entire thing takes place in the same environment, in probably oversized space station city that can't be bothered as much as throw a carpet down now and then, and you fight 10 million copies of the same robot that looks like a transformer that turns into a pink dildo. Everything that passes for a boss fight happens again at least twice, the story somehow gets from A to B while standing completely still, I sort of grasp that Burns doesn't care about innovation individual soldiers dying and the main bloke does, but demonstrate it another six or seven times just to be sure. At least he cares in cutscenes, not in gameplay because he's busy plopping. But hey, don't worry that the game doesn't evolve much because it's also really short so it won't bother you for long. All in all, if you're planning to buy Vanquish then make doubly sure you don't need the money for anything really important like medicine or a donation to the Republican Party because it kind of feels more like a proof of concept than a complete game. A concept proved, certainly, you can have a fun cover shooter while you glide around on your back the whole time like a prostitute on a highly polished dance floor, but the time to develop the concept into something a bit meatier has long since passed, and now the game only exists is a sort of glimpse into a parallel universe where AAA shooters remember that video games are supposed to be fun. That aside, Vanquish is also a PC port of a last generation game. So let's take a moment now to share our favourite bugs. That one where you took double damage if the game was running 60fps must have been a nightmare for hardcore PC gamers, for whom playing at 30fps is apparently like trying to breathe with a plastic bag on their head. The measure I was given to correct the bug added a whole bunch of exciting new ones, like on one level I kept falling through the floor and dying before the screen had faded in. Loading screen, pause, hideous dying scream, reload, repeat. It was like playing a blunt dramatisation of stillbirth. 